Hello and welcome to The Matrixes with Jonathan and Shiva. We are consciousness researchers, if you don't know us yet, and we talk about all the exciting topics related to The Matrix. This also includes astral travel, Lucedi's dreams, but also spiritual dissociation. And other topics related to spirituality. This time we are preparing a three-part video series about lucid dreaming for you. Firstly, the theory, the techniques and the experiences that we have had, that other people may have had, what you can learn and so on. But today I would say let's start with the theory. Yes, lucid dreaming is a term that many people actually already know, especially in the spiritual scene. And yes, everyone says somehow, yes, I already know lucid's dreams, old hat. Is there anything more exciting? And many then resort to astral travel, i.e. learning out-of-body experiences or other ways to expand consciousness. And we have somewhat neglected lucid dreaming in our YouTube channel. We don't have that many topics, that's what we noticed recently. And so we thought we would now devote three parts to lucid dreaming in order to round off the topic in terms of content and provide our perspective on this interesting ability. Yes, I think lucid dreaming is a very underestimated ability. In your dreams, or especially in lucid dreams, you have so many opportunities to really develop spiritually. But unfortunately, as you say, for many it's old hat and no longer all that exciting. But for me it is one of the most exciting abilities next to dissociation. Yes, lucid dreaming is definitely very exciting because the possibilities are enormous. Even if lucid dreamers don't necessarily realize this because most lucid dreamers just want to have fun. They look at it more like a computer game where you can then be there live as if you were wearing VR glasses with feelings everything about it. So actually suicide dreaming is a bit like wearing VR glasses in 50 years or so, or 100 years. Exactly. The sensations are also much more intense. Everything is more intense. The colors are more intense. Everything is also much clearer. And yes, that's very close to VR in 50 years, I would also say. So again, to clarify, lucid dreaming is the ability to recognize that you are dreaming within a dream. And then you don't decide to say, oh shit, it's just a dream, I'll wake up again, but instead you stay in the dream and then try to control the dream and recognize that you're in a dream actually, actually lying in bed with his physical body. And the interesting effect here is that as soon as the dreamer realizes that he is in a dream, the dream becomes the present. Because in most cases it happens that we wake up in the morning and then think, yes, I dreamed something. I was standing at a train station and wanted to go home classic archetypal dream. The interesting thing is that this dream only exists in the past. This means that when we wake up in the morning we remember that we dreamed something. So the dream is already over and we only remember. So this is actually a past event which somehow managed to get into our memory banks. Things are different with lucid dreaming. There, the dream of the past becomes the present. So within the dream, we become aware that we are dreaming, and then we are in the present and in a dream. And that is the goal of an aspiring lucid dreamer, 
And as soon as the dreamer becomes lucid, at the moment when the dream becomes the present, the cloudy veil that dreams normally bypass or surround also disappears. And in this context, it happens that the dream becomes really real, as real as we perceive our everyday lives right now. And that's the interesting thing about getting into this state for many lucid dreamers. And lucid dreamers are also often called oneronauts, which comes from Greek. These are, yes, those who navigate through dreams. Or you can also call them cybernauts, because many people also see dreams as simulations as reality simulations, and that's why many people call them that. Also, cybernautics or cybernauts who can dream lucidly because they have currently become conscious within the reality simulation and move consciously within it. And if you have had a lucid dream often enough, i.e. if you have become aware that you are in a dream and you see how clear it is, at some point you will inevitably realize that our everyday life is also a dream. And if at some point you realize that our everyday life is only a dream, you have many possibilities open to you that are related to the matrix, many insights that actually lie behind it. Because every night you connect your consciousness to an alternative reality of yourself and just dream it. Unfortunately, you are not consciously aware of it. But when at some point you realize that when you are connected there and become conscious, i.e. become lucid, you are in a dream or with a self, another self of yours, you see that this self that you are currently dreaming where you are plugged in is the same self that you are. An alternative self of yours can also join your everyday reality and become lucid or at least aware that he is currently dreaming you or is connected to you. I find this a very interesting aspect that everything is just dreams, including your everyday reality. The situation is that yes, as we have already explained in another video, the wholeness of the self has been divided into different possible realities. And in every reality, your wholeness and ours have placed a self in order to have experiences there, so that no experience can be left out. Your everyday life, on the other hand, is such that you only ever seem to experience one reality. and all the other parts of yourself are also in the alternative realities and are all connected to one another via a gigantic network. And those are the dreams. This means that if, as Shiva says, you project yourself from your body into a dream at night, then you may well, and we assume about 95% of the time, I would say, connect you to one of these alternative selves and then you have the experience of this alternative self and you don't even notice it at first because you still feel like yourself. How then can you be another self? And that's why you don't even notice that you've actually been connected to an alternative self or an alternative version of yourself. And that also explains why you sometimes suddenly think in your dream, yes, that's my friend, that was a friend of mine that I dreamed of, and I don't even have him, that friend. Or in the dream, I live in a city that I don't live in in my everyday life. And all these things... 
And the reason for this is that you are connected to an alternative self at that moment. Example. As a child, you always wanted to be a nurse or a firefighter. And then at some point, you become an office stud and sit in an office at some company and do the office work there. Yes, but because you wanted to become a nurse or firefighter back then, this reality also exists in which you actually became a firefighter or nurse. And then it may well be that you dream about this reality at night, and then you wonder, you, I worked in a hospital as a nurse. Or I dreamed that I worked as a firefighter. And that is the example, the classic example that one could give here of how these realities are interconnected. Because the subconscious is much larger than our normal everyday consciousness. And for the subconscious there are no decisions that have to be made. Rather the subconscious says to itself, I have to go through all the decisions in order to be able to form a reasonable picture. This means that the subconscious considers all realities to be equal, whether you chose it or not. From the perspective of the subconscious, you have actually chosen all realities, you could say. Or how do you see that? Absolutely the same. Of course they are all equal. Yes, what would be the benefits other than the obvious ones like having fun, learning to lucid dream? Yes, as I already mentioned, at some point you realize that everyday life is also a dream. And yes, if you train very diligently, you will eventually be able to become lucid in everyday life. We once made a video about it, lucidity in everyday life, the magnifying glass. Very exciting topic. That's what it actually comes down to at some point. Because of all the lucid dreams, you have the chance to become lucid at some point in your everyday life, to recognize that and to get really deep into it. That's actually one of the main benefits for me, I would say, of practicing lucid dreaming. Uh, but of course, also for personal development and spiritual development. Let's say you have childhood trauma, but you can't remember because something happened and you don't remember. You can then work on these topics in lucid dreams or with your dream teacher. Everyone has a dream teacher and a spirit guide. In any case, you can work with your dream teacher who will show you things for your spiritual path or who, well, he won't hand you everything on a silver platter. For me, it's more like puzzles but it also helps you on your spiritual path. You can then talk to him, communicate, and really, really, really get a lot further than just in everyday consciousness. For me, these would be the two main advantages, spiritual and personal development, and at some point becoming lucid in everyday life, which is a very phenomenal state, a state of consciousness. Yes, definitely. And the subconscious, as just mentioned, views all realities as equal. And for the subconscious, everyday reality is also a dream. And that's just the point that a lucid dreamer eventually realizes. There is no other way. At some point, the lucid dreamer realizes, damn it, I was in a lucid dream that was so real, just as real as everyday life. And I could stay in there for hours doing something. Or the lucid dreamer realizes I woke up last night, not in my bed, but in another bed because the alarm went off. How can it be that I have a bed there, that I have an alarm clock, that I have parents or a partner or children? Reality has everything. Whatever our everyday reality has, you can also find it in dream reality. For example, if you talk to one of the dream characters, you will notice during the conversation what they all have.
She has parents, she has a brother, she has a sister, she has a grandmother, everything. It has an address. She may have a car or a moped or other things. And then as a suicide dreamer, you realize at some point, yes, everyday reality doesn't necessarily seem like a dream to me even now. Because I can't snap my finger and it will appear, but the dream realities are logically structured in the same way as everyday reality, only with one difference. And that is the reason why many people see everyday reality as the only real world and dreams as just dreams. Namely, that everyday reality has slowed down. Well, it's accelerated again now, but that's for another video. Yes, and because everyday reality has slowed down, we can stay here in this reality for much longer. But also only limited. This means that in everyday reality, you can stay for maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 hours at a time. But at some point, you have to go back to bed and sleep. There is no other way. And in a dream reality, reality runs faster. This means that you may only stay in the dream for 20, 30, 60, or 120 minutes and then have to go back to your everyday life. But there are also lucid dreams that last even longer. There are lucid dreams that can last for days. It just depends on what frequency the dream has. What setting you have made? Yes, that too. And the frequency decides, and of course your personal dream energy, how long a dream or a lucid dream will last. And in this context you can say that everyday life is also a dream, just a much slower dream. That means you can't snap it with your fingers. And then somehow a pretty man or woman comes around the corner and says, Hello, I'd like to be with you. That's not how it is then. No, manifesting here takes a few weeks. Right, manifesting takes time here. That means you can snap your fingers and say, I want to meet my amazing partner now. But it can take quite a long time until this actually becomes a reality. Yes, the question arises. If my everyday life is a dream, then who is dreaming me? In any case, it is very important to save the dream feeling so that you can call it up again and again in everyday life. Until at some point your everyday life really feels like it's a dream, like you're in a dream. This is actually the most important thing you can do or take with you from your dreams in order to learn lucid. Dreaming. Yes, that's level two for now. Yes, it's level two. Yes, I would say. But it's a foretaste of the next video, which is about the techniques. Yes, because level one is that you learn to recognize in a dream when you are dreaming that you are dreaming. And then in the dream you become so fully aware that everything around you is as clear as you are used to perceiving in your everyday life. This is level one, and you can do lots and lots of things that you find very fun. You can imagine anyone and hop into bed with them or something. Or you can eat whatever you want there without any chance of accidentally getting poisoned. Or you can also fly around there, jump around, or somehow turn into a tiger. Or talk to wolves or a raven or whatever, or with a coyote, or I don't know. And all of that is possible in a lucid dream. Yes, by the way, we have already made a video about the types of dreams. Lucid and high-level lucid dreams also occur there. The video is called Five Arts of Dreaming.
If you're interested, we'll link it below too. In lucid dreams, there is a certain type of energy that is very intense and, in my opinion, difficult to control. It's also part of the theory, I would say, and for me, that's the sexual energy. I find it very difficult to control and very intense, significantly more than other emotional states in lucid dreams. So when I come into a lucid dream, then it goes away. Yes, well, that is one of the obstacles that can come your way through any dream, namely that you become a rat sheep. This can happen, of course, because all dream energy is somehow also coupled with sexual energy, just as spiritual energy is also coupled somewhere with kundalini energy. And if you become lucid in a dream, especially as a beginner, it may very well be that you only want one thing at first, and that is limisex. And then you run around in the dream like you're insane, looking for an attractive partner, or if you're conscious enough, wishing for any partner. Yes, and then you mess around with it, and the result is that you lose your lucidity and wake up in bed again. And that's why it's actually an obstacle on the way to becoming an oneronaut. And you have to get that under control at the beginning. So fears are not the problem in dreams, in lucid dreams. You are not afraid at all. No, you're also much more conscious somehow. Yes, you are much more conscious and it flashes in your mind that you can suddenly perceive everything so realistically. The problem is more with the sexual energy that you don't have that much control over it in a lucid dream. And that's why it can happen that you end up using the dream for just one thing, namely making out with random people or something. And that's what a lucid dreamer has to overcome. That means he really has to learn to pull himself together in order to be able to experience the dream for longer and more permanently. Because as soon as you become intimately involved with one of the dream characters that you can meet in a lucid dream, your lucidity suffers and you wake up again. Most of the time anyway. Mostly, yes, exactly. And that is actually the main obstacle. I would say so too. So when you are inside a lucid dream... The main obstacle to becoming lucid in a dream is actually motivation and discipline. Yes, I would say that too. That you really do exercises, use techniques, that you really do it regularly, and if you really do it regularly, you should be able to see your first success after an average of three weeks. Some take longer, some even manage it in the first few nights, depending how much energy and passion you put into these exercises. Of course, the theory also includes the history of lucid dreaming, and Jonathan will now tell you a little bit about it. Yes, the history of lucid dreaming is still very much shrouded in darkness. You can't say that he discovered lucid dreaming. You can't say it like that. But from a scientific perspective, Dr. Stephen Larberg, the best-known researcher from the USA who has dealt with the lucid dream, He was a psychologist and wanted to examine this phenomenon in more detail. All his psychologist buddies used to say, yes, Lucid's dream is a brain spook. It's nonsense. Nonsense what's happening in there. It is impossible for a person to be asleep and awake at the same time. That doesn't work. That was the argument of the psychologists back then, the classical psychologists. And Stephen LaBerge once experienced a lucid dream himself and then saw that that wasn't the case. And Stephen LaBerge then founded an institute in the USA, the Lucidity Institute. 
and he really did several professional studies with EEGs, test subjects, and so on. Like the Monroe. Yeah, right. And then he instructed the lucid dreamers to try to send signals into the everyday world from a dream, from a lucid dream. To prove, hello, my body is sleeping, but I'm awake. And in science, people often put the body and the mind in the same box. As the saying goes, when the body is dead, the mind is dead too. If the light bulb is broken, the electricity is dead, according to the motto. And Stephen Laberge really wanted to prove scientifically that lucid dreaming exists. It's exciting to put things in perspective. In the 80s, and he actually did that because the lucid dreamer was connected via EEG and then started because he couldn't move his body. It didn't work in lucid dreams. The body is on standby and sleeping. You can't just raise your fingers and make any hand signals because then you'll be awake again, then the body comes out of standby mode. No. Interestingly, the so-called REM phases are also known from dream research. You know them. Rapid eye movement. These are the phases in which you dream the most. In the dream, your eyes always go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because all the dream images run like that in front of your eyes, like a slideshow. And Stephen LeBerge just took that into account. That is, aha, the body is in standby mode and only the eyes are moving. And then he came up with the funnel and thought, I'll send the lucid dreamer into the dream. It should become lucid and then send us signals via eye movements. That was just Stephen LaBerge's cool idea. And he did that with his test subjects, and lo and behold, it worked. The lucid dreamer was therefore able to transmit messages from a lucid dream to the EEG via his eye movements. They had a kind of Morse code for certain things, for certain descriptions, for certain answers, and confirmations, and these were then recorded. And from a historical perspective, that was the great moment that it was actually scientifically proven that lucid dreaming does exist. Of course, for us, this has always existed, so it wouldn't have mattered to us whether a lab or somewhere proved it or not. Because we have already experienced suicidal dreaming, but from a scientific perspective, it was a sensation. And many psychologists then said that doesn't exist. It's not like this stuff really exists. Yes, and since we mainly make German videos here on this channel, we also have to look a little into the history of Germany and Europe. The most famous lucid dreamer was Paul Tolley who was, yes, probably the best known lucid dreamer. It was because, yes, at some point he decided to commit suicide because at some point he realized, yes, all dreams are realities, everyday life. Everyday reality is also a dream. Then why am I still hanging around here? Then I'd rather go into the dream worlds and continue living there. He ultimately decided that I would say goodbye to this world and see that in another dream I fix my perception, my personality there and then be considered dead here in everyday reality. And that's what Paul Tolley did. Paul Tolley was, yes, what was he actually like? So I remember him as such a sunny boy. All 
always tanned, tanned, solar brown and was always somehow quite extroverted and hyper. He was also a Castaneda fan and has also written many works on Lucide's dreams, on the dream warrior and so on. So very exciting, very interesting, and he was damn good at lucid dreaming. So he actually had lucid dreams every night. Yes, actually, as a historical background. And yes, the interesting thing is that lucid dreaming is truly an amazing skill and a very exciting skill. But as Sheba said, underestimated and neglected, yes, it's slowly going out of fashion. Yes, you can say it that way too. Lucid dreaming is slowly going out of fashion because there are lots of other interesting, exciting things out there. Distractions. Distractions or especially the gradual awakening process that is taking place so globally also eats up a lot of attention. And because of all the reports that you hear in the mainstream media and then again in the alternative media, that's a lot of information and of course it can distract a lot from such topics. And what's very exciting about the whole story is that lucid dreaming is somehow the ability with which so many things are possible. The exciting thing is you don't have to do lucid dreaming alone. You can also arrange to meet a friend and experience a lucid dream together. It's difficult but possible. It's like calling a buddy and saying, hey, let's meet for coffee in town. Theoretically, figuratively speaking anyway. And yes, shared lucid dreams are also possible. We once made a video about it, dream sharing. We'll link it below. We weren't particularly lucid then, but we were a bit pre-lucid. We met together in a dream and experienced things, at least the same things. And yes, you can go on adventures together, explore things, or have fun. Yes, very exciting if you manage to do it. So dreaming together, it's called dream sharing, is not that easy for beginners. You really have to be a good lucid dreamer, or better yet, a trained lucid dreamer. And of course, you have to find someone who is also a trained lucid dreamer, and then you can learn to meet in this dream. Of course, I hope we'll talk about this in our second video, which is about techniques for achieving lucid dreaming. We'll definitely talk about the technique of how you can lucid dream together. Yes, I still remember at the Hello Dream Congress, there was also a group of researchers who always met in lucid dreams and went on trips or research together. Yes, that's right. I remember exactly. But that's the topic we'll save for the second video, namely the techniques. This video is more about the theory of the whole thing. And with the theory, it is, of course, also important that you firstly understand what lucid dreaming is, where it comes from, and according to statistics, as far as I know, I think, what kind of number was that? I think in a survey of a few thousand people or so, it turned out that somewhere around 20% of people have experienced a lucid dream at some point in their lives. And that is quite remarkable. That is remarkable. 20%, that means almost one in five people know roughly what is in a lucid dream or don't necessarily have to know it. For example, I have met lucid dreamers who didn't even know that lucid dreaming existed and then said to myself, like, this is an ability that I know in a dream that I'm dreaming. I have that every night but they just don't use it because they don't know what to do with it. That's just a shame.
Right, exactly. That is the point. So there are also people who can do it naturally or from the cradle and don't even know that it's an ability and don't know what you can do with it. Yes, what can you do with a lucid dream? So if you're in a lucid dream now, what can you do? Yes, as I already said, I think working with your dream teacher is very important. Gathering information about myself or the world around me, so to speak, through the matrix, those are the things I like to do in lucid dreams. Yes, what else can you do? Yes, so you said you can contact the spirit guide. So this is a dream teacher, so to speak, who teaches you about dreams in order to make subsidal dreaming even better. You can say that, right? Yes, of course, he does a lot more than just that. He teaches you in whatever form you need. For example, he teaches you how to extend the dream. He teaches you how you can sharpen your perception. He teaches you how to achieve more stability in your dreams. He teaches you what else is possible in dreams. So there is a whole range of options that are open to you, of which you usually have no plan as a suicide dreamer. He teaches me about the matrix, what concerns the matrix, things like that. Even personal things that you wouldn't think of yourself because you have far too many filters and camouflages in your everyday life, for example, something like that. Or you can also contact your higher self within a lucid dream and initiate a healing process there. This means you can absorb healing energy there and bring it into your everyday life. or parapsychological abilities. Yes, that's right, or find any exciting clues. Yes, you can solve questions and problems in your dream. If you are interested, you can then teach yourself to be better at telepathy through lucid dreaming. or telekinesis, psychokinesis. You can train all of these things in a lucid dream, and at some point, if you have trained for a very long time and are really good at it, in a dream, then you can take... the feeling of moving an object with telekinesis into your everyday life and then apply it in everyday life. An example. You can activate self-healing there, your self-healing powers. You can even manipulate your DNA there if you are a very good lucid dreamer. Works too. You can make yourself prettier or, I don't know, make you slimmer or, I don't know. Achieve other states of consciousness and take them into everyday life. Yes, right. That is also possible. Neuroconscious states, exactly. And all of these possibilities are possible with lucid dreaming. Correct. Things that you don't recognize in everyday life because they seem too hidden. Things that you really want to recognize, you can learn or recognize in lucid dreams. How, I don't know, overcome duality and you can take that into your everyday life too. All that kind of stuff. Or become lucid in everyday life, but that's pretty difficult. Level 10 or something. Yes, we'll talk about the techniques in the next video. We will definitely also discuss the dream levels that can be achieved in this way. Yes, have you ever had a lucid dream? Write to us in the comments what was your most exciting lucid dream, and we will talk about that too, but in the third part. That's it, I would say, for the theory. Then there are definitely lots of other exciting things. And if we think of something, we still have two videos ahead of us where we'll definitely mention it. But for now? Yes, for now, we hope we were able to give you an idea of what lucid dreaming is. 
and what is possible with a lucid dream and maybe show you that this is really an exciting skill to learn. And the next video is about the techniques, how do I become a lucid dreamer. Ciao, see you next time. Ciao.